Hey guys, what's up? Dion here. Today we're taking a look at Apple's latest iPad. Now, I've been using this for the past week and it is very fast, it has a great screen, and isn't really too different from the iPad Pro. I mean, in the box, we got the same accessories, the same documentation, pretty much the same box, just a little bit bigger and a cool new picture on the front of the box. The thing is though, this is single-handedly the best tablet in the market right now, especially if you're looking to replace your laptop with a tablet. I mean, if that's your goal and you like Apple's ecosystem, then this is definitely what you should get. However, if you're not looking to replace your laptop and you already have an older iPad or an Android tablet, if that one's still capable and you're not having issues with that, then this is definitely not worth upgrading to. I personally have the iPad Pro right now and I don't see myself upgrading to this because it's definitely almost the exact same thing. The few pros that it has, I mean, that's things that I would use my laptop for. Of course, if you don't have a laptop, then the new iPad Pro would be great. Now, why is it great? Well, it's really the perfect size. It's not too big to be a laptop nor too small to be the tablet you've been using for the past couple years. This tablet is just a tiny bit larger than the previous iPad Pro but the screen is noticeably larger, which means less bezels and a far better screen size for browsing the web, multitasking, and drawing with the Apple Pencil. Now I'm gonna keep this video pretty short, mainly because I really don't have much to say. It's very straightforward. If you're just looking for an iPad, then I highly suggest the iPad Air 2 or the iPad Pro if you wanna use the Apple Pencil on it. It's just better bang for your buck right now and you'll still get iOS 11 in the fall if you want all those new features. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you're here because you wanna replace your laptop with an iPad, then this is definitely the iPad to go for. It has a new 120 hertz refresh rate, which basically means you're gonna see pixels appear on the screen quicker. So when you are drawing with an Apple Pencil, it is pretty much instant when compared to the previous iPad. It also means scrolling through web pages, buttery smooth, and everything's just gonna look amazing on the screen. The screen also has kind of a less fingerprint smudging and also less glare. It's not that noticeable, but when I compare it side by side to my previous iPad, yeah, I can kind of see the difference. Now this new iPad is really fast with everything. I mean, it's so fast that you could pretty much run Mac OS if Apple allowed that to happen. And this means it feels a lot more like a computer or a laptop than a tablet. I mean, the thing is that this speed won't really be too helpful until we get to iOS 11, which kind of changes a lot of how the iPad works and what it allows you to do. And since iOS 11 is still in beta and I've been using it on the old iPad Pro, I mean, it's just not that great right now. So I can just imagine once the, you know, they finish iOS 11, and it's on this iPad, I can just, you know, imagine dragging files and opening apps and multitasking is really gonna be perfect with the internals of this iPad and it's gonna make for a far better experience than in any previous iPad. And now that we're talking about iOS 11, I do wanna mention that if you don't use multitasking and you wanna keep your iPad easy to use, then skip iOS 11 and hold off as long as you can, especially if you have something like an iPad Air, or just an older iPad in general, this is probably gonna slow it down quite a bit and you don't want that. So if it's running just fine right now, you don't care about the new features, keep it as is for as long as you can. I personally ended up reverting my iPad Pro to iOS 10 since it was just too buggy and too slow right now. I mean, it's still in beta, but you know, I'd rather keep it on iOS 10 for now. Overall though, I already got a MacBook, so I actually don't like the 10.5 inch on the new iPad. I usually type with my thumbs on my iPad and hold it with one hand sometimes, so I really like that 9.7 inch form factor, or at least the size of that tablet. So I would have actually preferred if they just increased the size of the screen and not the body, but I see why they did it, especially since they can increase the size of the keyboard closer to something like the size of a laptop. Overall, this is Apple's new iPad, and it's everything you expect from a new iPad. So if you get it, you won't regret it. But if you don't need the latest features, then the older iPad still holds up great. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or reach out to me on Twitter at RMRDNL or at Dark Gadgets, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Aside from that, do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, as that really helps me out. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.